There's a sports anniversary being celebrated tonight. The trotting track, Roosevelt Raceway, which made nighttime racing a big success, a huge success, in fact, and catapulted trotting into the fantastic industry it now is, will celebrate a great anniversary tonight. Jack has a very special story on that right now, and here's old Jackson. 20 years ago, Dave, an attorney by the name of George Martin Levy got the notion that trotting races should be run at night to attract the vast army of folks uh, obliged to work during the day. 20 years ago, it sounded like a pretty silly idea. But tonight, Roosevelt Raceway is celebrating its 20th anniversary, and through the years has been the scene of the truly great uh, innovations in trotting. In 1946, the Mobile Starting Gate made its debut at Roosevelt Raceway. Last year, Roosevelt inaugurated the first international trotting championship with horses representing France, Italy, Sweden, Germany, Norway, Canada, and the United States. Another Roosevelt innovation, its dream track with closed circuit television, air conditioning, plush restaurants, steam heat. Built at a cost of $20 million, a far cry from the early 1800s when the county fair was born in New England and one of the features was a harness race. Today, harness drivers are gentlemen of distinction and affluence who tug on their silks, sit spraddle-legged in their sulkies and race for much fame and many, many dollars. Oh, here's the finish of the messenger stake. First over $100,000. Let's watch it. Well, today, there are 400 trotting tracks throughout the United States, and in people and in dollars, a few statistics add up to something like this. Last year, more than 20 million people watched the trotters. Last year, the purses added up to $28 million, and the money that was handled in betting exceeded $1 billion, all attributable to the year 1940, when Roosevelt Raceway put the trotting races under the lights. Let's go a little behind the scenes now and talk to one of the best-known personalities in sulky land, a top driver, Del Miller, a man who parlayed know-how and daring into a million dollars. And Del, it's mighty happy to see you here on today. I guess you can't let go of those reins, can you, right now? Yes, so sir. just reach out and grab a hold. We've talked many times before. In harness racing, uh, we say trotters and pacers. Uh, can you briefly tell me what the difference is between the Jack, two? a uh, pacer is a lateral gated horse. He's right front foot and his right hind foot move together in unison. Mm -hmm. And a trotter is a diagonal gated horse. His right front foot and his left hind foot move up together. So one is going on a kind of a smooth sideway motion, which is the pacer, mm -hmm. and a trotter with a diagonal gait, such as a dog trotting down the street. And this, the, the difference between trotter and pacer, something that I continually get mixed up all the time, and I bet you do too. Uh, one of the unusual factors in driving is to see a driver with whip in hand holding both, controlling his horse, and yet in his left hand he has a stopwatch. How can you do all those things and still read a watch while you're racing, Del? Well, that just starting that watch is automatic, Jack. Mm -hmm. when, uh, go by the wire, even if you're watching the starting gate in front of you, you and glance sideways and see where it is, and you start it right there. But at Roosevelt Raceway, they have a device where you just glance up with a great big uh, timing device. We very seldom use the watch, mm -hmm. but always carry one just from force of habit. And then if we go by the quarter pole, you can always glance down and, and uh, split second to split second and see where you were at the quarter. But as I say, we don't use that at Roosevelt Raceway anymore, but we use the watch for warming up and still time at other racetracks. Well, Del, let me ask you something now. Uh, do you actually gauge a, a race by the, uh, by the watch, or is it your position and what the horses are doing around you? Well, knowing the capacity of your horse, say you have a horse that could go a mile in 2.6, well, you don't want to go over to the half in a minute because you're liable to finish the mile in 2.10 or 2.12. And as we save horses for the brush and the stretch, we have to gauge their pace more, more so than Thorbeds do. Now, do, uh, do some drivers use the whip uh, more than others? I would say it's usually most, um, more on some horses than other horses. Most drivers have to use it on some horses. We don't very often hit a horse real hard, but we have a saddle pad on them, and you'll see a person reach up and slap that saddle pad. Well, it gives the horse a little incentive to go on. But right. there is people, and I've hit something pretty hard, too, in a close finish. Mm -hmm. you want on, to get on, there. on the other hand, you can make a horse break very easily and go off strike. Oh, yes, if you hit them too hard, or maybe when you hit them, take a little too much hold of one side their mouth, they might throw them off stride. What's the big, uh, biggest hazard in driving, would you say? 
Well, those other seven horses are around you, and when you're in close quarters, they'll get into your wheel, tramp into your wheel from behind, and when you're pulling out on a horse, you have to be awful careful that you have enough clearance with your horse that he won't tramp into the wheel in front of you. Actually, uh, a wheel can get right in here then, and, and if you pull yes, it out, well, you'd be in real trouble. If I go to pass somebody, I want to be sure that I have enough clearance, because uh, the judges have m movies and watching, and if you happen to hit somebody like that, they can disqualify it. So not only for safety, but for to get there first without being sat down, you have to be awful careful. Uh, talking to some of the fellows out at, out at Roosevelt Raceway, and, and from time to time, I understand the drivers get into what is known as a rut, uh, and they, they don't win for a while. Uh, how do you get out of a rut? Do you change the techniques of what you're doing? I think sometimes you try to change them, and uh, it's like a, uh, a good batter getting in a rut. You uh, start pressing, and you, you'll do things that you shouldn't do in a race. I think the best thing when you're in a rut is just try to drive like you always did, and you'll finally come out of it. But if you start making different tactics and using, making different moves in your race that you should be making, that's when you're really pressing. It's like a batting slump in baseball. That's right. right. Now, Yogi Berra told me uh, one time when we were chatting about it, I said, how do you get out of a slump? He says, relax and hit the ball. Well, that's about the same way in driving. <laughs> about the same thing in driving. Uh, do you have any, any hobbies, um, actually, besides driving, would you say, Joe? Well, most, I generally play a little golf. Oh, you do My get out on the golf course? Version. How do you? When I understand your day starts very early, you have to get out there for workouts. Uh, you're busy with the horses most of the day, and then at night you're driving until late. I play most of my golf in Florida in the training season where we don't have any race and do it at night, so I go out uh, in the afternoons and play. I can well understand that. Uh, tell me, you started from scratch, and today you're a millionaire. Now, you made it all in trotting. Is there anything that uh, you would rather have done than, uh, than been in trotting? No, sir, I had a chance to go through college, and I did think about being a veterinarian once, but I uh, started racing horses, and when it came time to go to school, to go to college that fall, I stayed out at the fair. Uh, you also uh, uh, sell horses, you also train horses, and you drive. What is your day like, Dell? Well, at the races here, such as at Roosevelt Raceway, we'll get up around 7 o'clock in the morning, 7.30, have breakfast, go out to the racetrack, and work from horses from about 8 to 11.30 or 12 o'clock, mm -hmm. weather permitting, and uh, from then, from n after lunch, go back to the, we have an office at the stables and take care of your business, and try to get uh, back and take a nap from 3 to 6, and then go out and start racing at night yeah. again. It's quite a thing. Are you superstitious at all? Not a bit. Never? No, uh, I've never had any superstitions. Any of the drivers out there superstitious? I um, I don't know of any that have any superstitions on the racetrack. Mm -hmm. I understand there's a story about your father that he was a little superstitious, though. Not mine, because I <laughs> never, my father died when I was five years old. So oh, I I'm sorry. Then I had somebody else in mind. Somebody else's father. Uh, tell me one thing. Uh, what is the most important quality for a driver to have in, in a real tough race when you get into the high stakes? Well, I think that one of the main things is not to get excited and, and not be nervous uh, just because you're driving in a big race. And you have to have a little courage. You can't have uh, too much courage and do things that you shouldn't do. But I think just uh, good ability to know your horse, qualifications of your horse is a great thing to know, and use your right speed at the right time. And go the shortest way around the racetrack, too. That's, <laughs> that's, that's one of the main thing. things. Dale, thank you so much for being our guest. I'll be seeing you out at Roosevelt and uh, watching some of the fabulous driving that you do there during the season. Thank you so much for being our guest at the opening of, uh, of Roosevelt Raceway, which is today. Del Miller, the top harness driver, will be on the scene tonight when Roosevelt Raceway celebrates its 20th anniversary as a trotting track right here on Long Island. This is Today on NBC.